This coverage of MWC is brought to you by Bitdefender Mobile Security. The next flagship Samsung Galaxy S device is finally here, and we have your first look at it. Hey, it's Josh Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And here is your first look at the Samsung Galaxy S5. When it comes to design, we have the same plastic build that we already know and either love or hate from Samsung's devices. But now the back has soft touch material. And it is better than glossy plastic, as many people will posit, but it may or may not be better than the faux leather that we've had on the Galaxy Note 3. In the end, it still feels pretty nice in the hand, and those small perforations on the back, though it will be your opinion of whether or not those look good, do help a little bit with the feel. The shape of this phone is very similar to the Galaxy S4, however we do have much flatter sides and also the uh, more rounded corners that were reminiscent of the Galaxy Note 3. As far as the button layout goes, you do have an added twist here that the home button now includes a fingerprint scanner underneath that layer, and also the menu button has been replaced by a recent apps button. As far as the feel in the hand goes, we are dealing with a 5.1 inch display here so the phone is just a little bit bigger all the way around than the Galaxy S4. We are dealing with a slightly larger screen here at 5.1 inches, but it is a 1080p display despite rumors of even more resolution being available on the S5. As far as the quality goes, however, the AMOLED screen on the S5 is still very great and is very reminiscent of the Galaxy S4 from last year. Both perform beautifully with highly vibrant colors, and they might be perhaps oversaturated at times, but in the end, the display is still very enjoyable. Unfortunately, at the time of this recording, we've been unable to confirm exactly which SoC is going to appear in the Galaxy S5, but what we do know is it's a quad-core 2.5 GHz processor that should bring a lot of boosts in performance. So stay tuned for an annotation that will confirm which processing package will be found in here. As far as hardware goes, we do see Samsung return to the general trope that they have of adding in basically everything but the kitchen sink. Uh, we'll start off with the 16 or 32 gigabytes of onboard storage that can be bolstered by a micro SD card slot. As far as the battery goes, a 2800 remo uh, milliamp hour removable battery is available, which uh, its capacity may not be a large leap for Samsung, but they did look to give great power saving options. One in particular is an ultra power saving option, which not only gives you a very minimalistic home screen, but also makes everything completely grayscale. All the bits and pieces that were originally introduced in the Galaxy S4 do come back here on the Galaxy S5, uh, but there are some new and very specific additions that we will go through, and the first one that was already mentioned is the fingerprint scanner. Under that home button is a fingerprint scanner that allows you to swipe a finger down in order to unlock the phone, but after that, you do still have to turn on the phone and then swipe your finger in order to get into your phone. The other very interesting addition in the Galaxy S5 is the inclusion of a heart rate monitor, which is located right below the camera optics on the back. Essentially what happens is you can open up S Health, start the heart rate monitor, and when you lay a finger on top of the unit, it will read your heart rate and display it for you. It is good for all of those health fanatics out there, but is also uh, a bit questionable in terms of whether or not it's going to be ultimately useful for everybody. Perhaps the biggest development here is the inclusion of an ISOCELL 16 megapixel sensor camera. Now this camera is capable of some great shots as Samsung claims, and as far as the video capabilities go, 4K recording is available, but it is limited at 5 minutes because of the sheer size of the files. Now the camera app has been redone and it is very setting centric, as when you hit the settings button you'll see a lot of different settings for all of the different tweaks you can make to your smartphone photography. A few new modes are uh, available now as well like a selective focus shooting mode and also full HDR, live HDR rather, that will allow you to get some really nice photos. And finally, we make it over to software, and if you were looking for a very big update to the TouchWiz UI, due to the teasers that were coming out very recently for the Unpacked event, you might be a little disappointed. After all, the very things that make TouchWiz, well, TouchWiz, have remained largely the same, and it might be hard to tell what really is different. Well, the toggles in the notification dropdown are now similar to the ones that were found in the Note Pro tablet series, as everything is comprised of circles. The same goes for the settings pages. As far as multitasking goes, it does take on a somewhat different approach now that the menu button has been replaced with a recent apps button. You will be able to get some simple multitasking done by just using that button to go in and out of apps. As far as the home screens go, it is largely the same experience, but perhaps taking the page out of stock Android's uh, book, uh, the My Magazine UI has been brought to the forefront and is now a second screen uh, that you are able to swipe to from the right. 
Ultimately, if you were looking for an upheaval of the general TouchWiz UI, you probably aren't getting it here in the Galaxy S5. However, all of the features that were introduced in previous Galaxy S devices and even Note devices do make it over here and should provide a very full-featured experience. And so, there you have it for this first look at the Samsung Galaxy S5. Much like Samsung has done with previous Galaxy devices, they're really looking to put as much as they can into this one phone. Thankfully, it is put into a screen that is very enjoyable to use, and after that, it does pack a lot of power with that new processing package. In the end, whether or not all of the features are useful for you is something you're going to have to find out when this phone comes out onto the market. Well, until then, stay tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage from the Mobile World Congress here in Barcelona, Spain.